Hello all you awesome people out there. Welcome back to Car Project Central. Today we are going to be showing you how to diagnose and replace your clutch slave cylinder. Uh, so as you probably know we've been working on the Alpha a little bit recently. Uh, we've got to do the radiator. Uh, we also just did a little fix on the exhaust. Uh, but at the same time we actually found out that there's a bit of an issue with the clutch slave cylinder. Um, so the Alpha clutch has been behaving a little bit weirdly ever since we got it. Uh, quite often when you first start the car or when you first get into the car after not driving it for a little while, the clutch pedal uh, will actually be a little bit depressed um, instead of being all the way up at the top of the travel. Uh, and so therefore we thought maybe there's some air leaks, maybe there's some air bubbles. Uh, we were going to bleed the system first, so that's what we were doing. We were going to get this bleed valve and use it to bleed the system. Uh, but, as soon as we started doing that, we found that this bottom hose area here was actually quite wet. And there's no real leaks from the hose itself. So what we're thinking is uh, there's a bit of fluid that has leaked from the actual cylinder itself. So if you actually touch the bottom of the cylinder, you can see that there's actually a bit of fluid at the bottom of the cylinder. Which is not really a good sign. Um, and then the other thing that uh, we tested was whether or not there was fluid here in this in this little seal and there does seem to be some fluid in there as well which is not really what it's supposed to be doing um, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually pull this off and we are going to replace it with a brand new slave cylinder so to get access to the top of the gearbox like this you actually have to pull out the entire battery and also the battery bracket um, and some of the uh, the the air intake hosing as well. So we've got the battery, the battery bracket all sitting there and we've got the um, intake hose over there. It's pretty simple, really straightforward so you do just have to remove uh, I think around about four bolts um, to get the battery bracket out and then uh, you can actually get access to the slave cylinder really really easily. So that's that's the good news is that it's pretty easy to access. The bad news is in order to get the slave cylinder out, there is actually a circlip that you need to remove. And these actually require some special tools because uh, there's two small holes right here and here. So the idea is that you need to separate those two out and then take the circlip off in order to uh, take off the whole entire slave cylinder. Um, so we've just ordered some new tools and uh, we'll see you shortly. Alrighty Rowan, so uh, we had to use a punch with a hammer uh, just to hit the slave cylinder and also take out um, the bit with the rubber uh, because it wouldn't go through otherwise. Um, we also got some special pliers for the circlip. Have you got the pliers somewhere? Sweet. Yep, so those are the special pliers um, you'll, need to, you'll need to buy. That one right there for circlip pliers. And now we're just taking the old slave cylinder out. Um, there's going to be quite a bit of fluid that comes out, so just be careful with that. There we go. It's our old slave cylinder. Looks pretty manky, so definitely time for a change. There we go, that's how the cylinder works. What it looks like. And our one had fluid um, in the boot here, so it's definitely time for a bit of a change. Seals in there are gone. Yeah, all the seals are gone, so got a new one sitting right here, which we'll show you soon. Alright, so this is our old slave cylinder. <laughs> you can see it's um, probably the original one from uh, when the car left the factory, so it's probably well due for a change. And then this is our new slave cylinder with a um, nice new rubber boot, nice shiny paint, and hopefully new seals, and hopefully it won't leak as well. Let's leave it there for now. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're just sliding it in. It's going to be a pretty tight fit, I think. It's just that that is compressed. Pull this out now. Yep. I'll let some of the air out, and then we can compress it. There we go. That's it. Nice. 
screwdriver on the bottom. Seeing if I can assist it. Got it. It's not quite in, but I'll see it now. Mm -hmm. Still quite a way. Still over that. Okay. It's gotta get into that hole there, not this one here. Okay. Yeah. And then what happens is your circuit plies actually get in the way. Mm-hmm. And at the back. Yep, that's all in. Great, bit of a mission to get the circuit back on, but um, just be patient and it'll click into the right place. So now we've got a new clutch slave cylinder. I'm gonna connect up all, connect up the line, and then uh, we need to bleed the whole system. Okay. Anytime that you put one of these pipes, whether it's brakes, clutch, or anything, even um, like fuel hoses or anything like that, you want to be sure that you get these threads lined up because it's aluminium, and if you tighten it even with your hands if you get it wrong you will mess up the threads so you want to do it just very lightly and if you feel it's not going don't force it with your fingers you have to take it off and re-straighten it it should go in very easily be warned See how easy that goes in. Mm. Yeah, so just put uh, just put a very little bit of pressure on it. Very small amount of pressure. Okay, cool. Okay, so now we're ready to bleed the slave cylinder uh, and get some new fluid in there because we don't know how old the fluid is uh, in the reservoir as well. So what we've done is we've rigged up the little hose that goes into this bottle, uh, and we're going to pump the brakes. Uh, sorry, pump pump the clutch. Sorry. Um, <laughs> we're going to pump the clutch uh, and then the old fluid is going to come out and we're going to replace it with some new fluid. Yeah. Alright, so I'm just pushing the clutch in and it's going straight to the floor. So there's no pressure in it yet. Yep, now we're getting some fluid. Not surprised. How's that? So that's what the old clutch fluid looked like. It's pretty black and uh, definitely needs a bit of replacing. Alright, so we're putting in the Motul 660 uh, brake fluid. Uh, this one's like racing brake fluid, but obviously uh, just use the one that you want to use. Uh, we're putting this in just because it was recommended by one of the other guys in the Alpha Club. And also we'll probably be doing a few track days on this car, so just want to put in some nice brake fluid. And uh, one issue that you're going to run into probably is the fact that the fluid just sits at the top of the reservoir cap because there's a filter on the reservoir 
Um, so we're just trying to figure out how quickly it's going to sink down. Otherwise we might have to um, remove the filter before we can fill it up. Okay, so the reason why we didn't want to pull the filter out is because we don't want to get dirt into the system. So we just, we've just found a new way of um, getting the fluid through the filter. So what happens is when you press the brakes, the fluid gets sucked in to the reservoir um, and that allows the fluid to go through the filter. So the other thing um, I did recently was I lubed up the clutch master cylinder, which actually just sits just over here in the car. You can just see it. I actually went and bought a new one, um, but then I discovered that um, just lubing it up, lubing it up uh, actually really helps as well. So now it's really quiet and it works really well and the pedals are fantastic as well. So yeah, it's working really well. See, no problems at all. Alright, thanks for watching. Uh, I've got a few more episodes left on the Alpha. It's pretty much all done, uh, which is really awesome because uh, I can actually enjoy it and I can use it. Uh, but there is a little bit more content coming and, you know, of course there's going to be things to fix on the car still. Um, so stay tuned and I'll see you soon.